Hi BookTube, welcome to Jackie's Literary Corner. I am Jackie and today I'm not actually going to talk about literature. I'm going to give you a review of, or summary slash review of one of the Are Afraid of the Dark episodes. One of you guys commented that you missed those so I thought this time of year would be perfect to bring them back. Maybe I'll do them, you know, September through through October or September through November. I do think um, this is the perfect time to bring them back. So, um, I thought since it's back to school season, I would talk about two episodes that take place during the school hour, during school. Where the main setting is a school setting. So, I'm going to talk about the tale of Locker 22 and the tale of the Dream Machine. So, first let's talk about the tale of Locker 22. So Locker 22 is about our main protectress, Julie. She has come to a new school from France. And um, when she gets there, she you know her the principal's principal shaft is showing where her locker is. It's kind of far away though, and it's like it looks like a really old locker. Um, you can even see the imprint of an old sticker that was left on that was on there before. Um, and she's a little like frustrated that it's far away and she points it out to the principal and of course he has to have a bad attitude. He's all like, Are you complaining, Miss Defoe? And I'm like and throughout this whole episode I'm wondering why is this guy in teaching? He clearly hates kids. Although I feel like that's a trope in fiction where like if you have a school setting you have a the principal hates kids or just is really cranky. And maybe that's just because, and now you could argue that they're so frustrated with their job, um, and just tired of dealing with teenagers with bad attitudes, they just get fed up. But I feel like you should, you're supposed to at least pretend you don't, you know, pretend you like kids. And throughout the whole episode, he's like this bad attitude, like, you know, getting, losing his temper. And I'm just like, dude not how you can handle you can't handle kids that way you do not lose their temper like I understand she was you know like you don't have time for you know but it's like her being all she said was you know isn't it kind of far and you know and maybe she had a tone but it's like really I mean you didn't need to be like make her feel like she's new and she's nervous and it is kind of out of, and you know, you want her to get to class on time. I mean, I guess she could speed walk, but I don't know. The, the principal annoyed me. Um. But, so, of course, she's all, like, not wanting to get on the principal's bad side. She's like, okay, this is fine. Um. And then even on her first science lab, she messes up in a big way and causes a big mess and... Um, he, you know, these two kids start picking on her, making fun of her. Fitz and Donnie, which, who would name their kid Fritz? To me, that sounds like a dog name. It's the name of a dog. It's like, really? Why would you name... I mean, I, I know sometimes parents name, give kids names that might be embarrassing kids, so they give themselves a nickname, but he didn't even give himself a nickname. It's like, really? Who would... Why would you do that to your son? You know, why would you give him the name Fritz? It's like... I think maybe he should change his name to Frankie or something. I don't know. Although I think Frankie is the name is the nickname for Francis. But um anyway, so throughout the day she ends up getting this girl who's dressed like the nineteen sixties or something is standing there lurking, watching her. She tries to get her to put on this necklace. And she's a little creeped out by this. And after meeting one of the kids who defends her against Fritz and Donnie, Chris, she asks him about, is anyone seen a ghost? He starts getting a little suspicious, and he's like, oh, no, and, um, but he asks one of his friends. And, of course, that night, Julie gets a call from Fritz and Donnie pretending to be spirits, doing the whole moaning and moaning sounds and, you know, trying to scare her, and she gets pissed off, and, of course, she thinks that Fritz is guilty, What she kind of is. Because he did tell his friend, um, who told, who apparently he didn't realize he couldn't trust that friend. But of course we're dealing with teenagers here, so. Um, so he tells, so she's upset, and then, um, 
I'm trying to think when she first put on the necklace. It's been a while since I watched this. I had to actually look up to refresh my memory on the character names. But I do believe she puts on the necklace. I don't know if she put the necklace on before this or after this. But she puts on the necklace. Actually, I think it was after. Sorry, I, I apologize. I should remember. I should have done my research or watched the episode beforehand. But, um, she puts on the necklace. She finally, the girl, the ghost girl, ends up getting her put on the necklace. And she finds herself back in 1969. Of course, she doesn't know in 1969. And she's approached by this girl who looks at her as, like, you know, calls her candy. And it's like, oh, that's so cool. I love your necklace. And... Although, um, although I think she says something like far out or something. Um, and it, everything's just really weird and eerie for her and for her. And she's wondering why they call, you know, she's like, why are you calling me Candy? And, um, of course the girl has a nickname for herself. And her friend's like, oh, I'm sorry, Sunflower or whatever. I cannot remember what the nickname was. But, um, and then... Conveniently, the prince, Mr. Shocker, shows up, but he's looking a little bit younger, and he has a really fake-looking mustache, and one of those ones where it's a mustache, and, it, uh, like, a mustache, and it's, like, a thing that wraps around his mouth, but it just, I think, or maybe it's just the mustache, I don't know, either way, it looks ridiculous, like, it was bad trying to, you know, the makeup, makeup, hair makeup department trying to make him look like a different time period, give him, like, facial hair or something. And he's all like, come on now, Miss Warren. I'm waiting for you. We don't have time for this. And he's like, I said, he clearly has a bad attitude the whole out throughout the whole episode. So she's freaking out. Julie's freaking out. And then she removes the necklace and she, um, because she doesn't know what else to do. And she's back in the present. And that's when she confronts Chris about it. And, you know, he's trying to apologize to her. But she's like, I don't care right now. I just want to know, you know, what did your friends say? And they, and you know, he admitted that my friend, you know, like one of those knew somebody who knew somebody who saw something. And he's freaking, you know, and, um, she puts the necklace and brings him to the past with her. And which, again, is really awkward. It's really funny because, of course, he's all like freaked out and he doesn't know what's going on. And, he, you know, they're asking, you know, her friend. Candy's friend is like, who's this? And he's like, I don't know. And he's like, you don't know. Okay, well then, you let me know when you figure that out. And there's a, there's a kid there who's clearly, you know, getting drugged up and getting high. And, um, which, although they don't really spell that out for you. They just, he's all dopey and, like, loopy. And it's like, whoa, man. And, you know, his eyes are masticated or whatever, like, but, but clear, like, clearly adults will know, older, older people will know what's going on. I mean, if you've never done anything like that, you, you're gonna, you'll be able to tell this kid, clearly he's meant to be all, like, whoa, you know. So, you know, they're like, Chris is freaking out, it's like, okay, let's get back, We're, I'm done with this, and. Um, so they decide to do some research and find out what's going on, and they find Candy's old yearbook, and they find her picture, find that, you know, and which, fun fact, apparently, was that they picked the year when the White Album came out, if you know the, Be if you know the Beatles. <laughs> um, so, anyway, they, like, freak, you know, so they're trying to figure out, they realize that there was, and, um, something happened to where Candy died, so they have to piece it all together, and he makes Julie, prom because he's freaked out and concerned, he makes Julie promise not to ever say, not to do it again, just, or at least go with him, but Julie wants to figure out what's going on, she wants to understand it, and she, so she decides, to, even though Chris goes off, takes off to go investigate, and he finds out, maybe gets some answer, or Actually, no, he was going to just, like, leave and go home, telling, warning Julie not to do anything. Um, but she goes back anyway and decides to figure things out herself because, of course, she wants to know what's up. So she goes back and goes through the motions of what Candy was supposed to do. So she goes with Shaffner after talking with her friend. And he, she has a, apparently, a lab assignment for her final grade. Like, she has to stay after school and 
make you know improve her grades so she can get into college or graduate at least um so chris goes finds one of the other teachers and asking him and he decides to ask him because of course this teacher is a little bit older has been around a lot longer than shafter and ask him what's um you know what happened he you know tells him it's a tragic story you know miss warren had you know there was a botched experiment that got her blown that got her killed and um you find out that shafter was the teacher that was there when she which i'm confused i mean i know that it wasn't it was an accident you know i'm confused about that part although you know let me get to the end i'll, I'll talk about that in a minute so, like, Chris is freaking out, oh my god, and so he's looking for Julian, turns, he realizes that she went back, he tries to summon, call to the ghost, and the ghost appears, and, you know, he's like, I gotta warn you, what happened to you is gonna happen to Julian if you don't send me back? So she takes him back with her, and Julie's, you know, she's supposed to do the science experiment, I don't remember what it was, and they you know, they make it all dramatic with music and slow, and she's just slowly going through the steps. Chris is panicking, trying to get to her. Um, Shafter has left the room, has bumped into Chris in the hall, in the hallway, and he's trying to, you know, stop Chris from, and he's acting like, oh no, I'm not gonna let you, ru I'm not gonna let you interfere, and yeah, guess what, your, your friend here is gonna fail, and He's being obnoxious. It was, like, really weird how the principal was acting. He's, like, I don't know. He was just, like, he was enjoying it. Like, he's taking pleasure, which maybe that's what they wanted to, to come off. That he was enjoying watching her squirm, watching them squirm and taking pleasure in this. Which, again, makes me wonder, why is he doing this job in the first place? Clearly, clearly he doesn't like it anymore. I, I think he should have retired or something. But, um, or got another, like, got another quit and took another job or something but anyway so he shows home but he like is able to get away from shafter escape and get to julie just as she's about to do something and turns out chris shows that something was it was the equipment was faulty that the the rope or whatever or the device or whatever it was was frayed and they realize if julie had done julie just as if if Julie had done that just as Candy did, then she would have been killed. Of course, they used the word toast in sandwich. That is so funny. And there was, and that reminds me of the, uh, you know, that it's not as funny in that one. It's not as over the top. But I remember in the later seasons when it was Tucker's group and they did the episode of the Gruesome Gourmets, that one kid was like, you're toast. Or are actually, they've done, I think it was in that one and in the episode with the dark music with the bully. <laughs> but some, like, some of the phrases that the bullies say, like, is hilarious. Just as a way to avoid saying bad, saying curse words. They just say, you're toast. Um, and the principal in Shafter realizes, like, oh, it's a good thing you saw this. And then, of course, he ends up the next, and then, of course, they, so, they go back to the present, and, like, and it's, like, they go back, and they're like, oh, so that's how Candy died, resolved everything, and they're, it's the, bind, it's the ending resolution, everything's okay, and then they're still, they're at their locker, and then the principal, their principal, or vice, she seems like it might have been vice principal, shows up, and it's like, what are you, and it's a woman, it's not Shafter, and they're like, what are you kids doing? And they explain, Chris, you know, comes with this quick lie saying, oh, I was helping her with her locker, and, and it turns out she, and it's, it was her locker long ago, and she, it always helped, she always had trouble. And it turns out that that was Candy, that, um, it was Candy Warren, who was now the principal. Which, yeah, I get, you know, which is funny, because, I mean, I get why they did that, been like a little wink, wink, now she's the principal, but it's like, I mean, did she like school? Did she love school that much she'd be willing and love kids that she wanted to be a principal? I mean, she's a little bit nicer and more polite and sweeter. Not as, like, a, like yelling 
at the kids. <laughs> so what I wanted to say earlier is why the heck did he not get, like, he was, I guess, okay, well actually I do know. It's probably because they assumed that they didn't realize that they figured, oh, Shafter must have tried to save her. So, like, it wasn't his fault, but I don't know why he would, to me it's a little weird that he becomes principal when he's responsible for that, he could have been responsible for that girl's death. But I guess they assume it was an accident and that maybe, um, maybe this is a, you know, oh, you tried to save her, so we're going to make you principal. Or, oh, we gonna, we're going to move on. And I just, I don't know. It's just weird to me that he's, of course, at the same time, I, I've seen this episode enough times. I know it's, you know, I've seen this episode before, so I know it's going to happen. So I know he's... He's the one who kind of made the mistake. But, and he could have done something. He probably could have done something if he had checked his equipment as Chris berates him about. Which, I love that. It's like, check your equipment, Mr. Shafter. Which, I love that moment. It's like, yes, especially without it's a hard of a time that Shafter gives the kid, you know, gives them. He deserved that. And But, I'm like, I'm still wondering how he ended up being principal. To me that's weird but it's like and but it's also kind of funny how candy becomes principal and we don't know if she would have wanted that job i mean of course it's a 30 it's a 30 minute episode and i i do love that she ends up cornering the bullies as like mr or so no mr and stops them before they you know can escape so um yeah i just it's just funny that how that all worked out <laughs> Which, it's a 30 minute episode and they wanted to kind of give a, like, a, oh, well, since you resolved, stop this from happening by interfering when you went back in time. So, this allowed that to happen. You changed history. Which, and I guess it depends on what you believe with, with time travel. What your theory is about how time travel would work. Because not everyone believes you can change the past. The past is the past. You know, you can't, you know, most people, I think, believe that you can't change it. You can't change what happened. But then in other sci-fi stories where time travel, like Back to the Future, there is, you know, where you do change it because one thing that a character does differently. Or, like, a character goes back in time and alters it, you know? Which is usually the case. Like, Back to the Future, that's how what happened is Marty in the first movie goes back in time and changes how his parents met and fell in love and everything. But it was just, it was just funny that he, okay, so anyway, let's talk about the tale of the dream machine. So this, as someone who wanted to be a writer and failed in it because I'm lazy, I really have a special place in my heart for this one. Just like I have a special place in my heart for the bookish babysitter. Um, so in this one we have... Okay, wait a second. Let me... I gotta remember. Sorry, I gotta look up. Um... I have to look up... Oh, wait. No. I have to look up... Okay. That episode, because I do not remember the character names. Um, where is it? Okay, sorry about that, guys. I should have looked this up before. Here it is. And it's in the same season. Good. Okay, um, so, The Tale of the Dream Machine is the story of Sean Hackett. He, he has a, he's a, he wants to be a writer. I think he's moved into a new house. Or either that or they're working on his room or the attic or something. There's, um, and his best friend, it's, um, they're in class, the teacher is reading something, um, and his best friend, of course, is asleep, 
His best friend Billy has fallen asleep. And so after the teacher is read to them and it's almost time for the bell to ring, she gives them an assignment, which I'm thinking that's, which this assignment for me is like, really? <laughs> that's it? But anyway, the assignment is basically they have to write a two page short story. And I'm like, that that's, you're groaning because of that. Because they, of course, they're all like, aw, man. It's like, Really? You can't write two pages? I mean, granted, it's hard to get started, but come on. It's like two pa- all you have to do is do pa two pages. It's like, that's- <laughs> Although, I guess that is- that can be hard to come up with something really good. But I don't know, it's not- I- I don't think it's that hard an assignment, as they seem to think. So, you know, of course Billy's all like, oh, you know, me, I'm gonna do it at the last minute. And, um... So they end up going, they get to his house, and like I said, I think, I'm not sure if it's a new house, or I think they just moved into their house. Well, um, and they're going, his room, Sean's room is upstairs, and they end up falling through the floor. And, um, Sean ends up falling through, or Billy falls through the stairs. And discovers this ancient creepy typewriter um, by this famous writer from the 1930s. Think like, um, what is his name? R think like Raymond Chandler type guy, typewriter. So Sean's really excited because like I said, he wants to be a writer. So he immediately comes up with a story and um, quickly, teams, which I think that is such a cool concept, the idea of the typewriter. But, you know, my mom has reminded me that, you know, you, if you make a mistake, you're going to have to just white it out or something. You can't, you can't fix mistakes. So, which is funny because I remember a while back watching a movie with Joshua Jackson and this one older actor that's a really well known, um, from, he's on the, he's on National Treasure as the FBI guy, um, but where he plays a famous, a famous writer living in, I think, like, France. And Joshua Jackson, like, is a journalist or a wannabe writer. And he goes to talk to him. And I remember there was a scene where he explains to him, if you want to write, just, you know, he's telling him how he should use a typewriter. And that's good for you because then you can't make mistakes. Because, of course, it's not easy to make mistakes on a um, typewriter. Because then you have to edit them out and stuff. So, but anyway, um, so he, while Billy has fallen asleep in his room, Sean writes a story about Billy wandering through a crumbly old graveyard, and um, he is looking for the grave of someone named Blind Paul, and it's late night. He has a flashlight, he's trying to find. And he snuck in there on a dare, and then he gets pushed, and then he is. Someone is clearly watching him and following him. And then he is caught by Blind Paul who pushes him in the grave and buries him alive. And he doesn't come and he's like knocking on the coffin and everything and freaking out. And John ends it with Billy never made it out of the grave and no one ever heard from him. And his the real Billy wakes up screaming and he's like, oh my god, what just happened? And he tells... He tells Sean, explains, shows him the story, and he freaks out. Of course, he, you know, is like, oh, this is just a coincidence, and he dismisses it. And eventually, and Sean decides to write another story um, on the typewriter about his crush, Jennifer. And he writes about how they, he and Jennifer meet the dance, and turns out Sean is a vampire, and he tries to bite her neck. And turns out, and so the next morning at school, turns out Jennifer, he bumps into Jennifer, who has not slept. She is exhausted, and, it, and she reveals that she had a nightmare about going to the school dance with a vampire, and the vampire was Sean. So Sean realizes what's up, and starts getting suspicious about what's going on, and freaking out, because he thinks he's, you know, this this typewriter, whatever he types on it, make comes true, or at least through a dream. And 
So he tries to, so he invites Billy and Jennifer over and explains to them what is going on. Of course, there's a, um, explains them what is going on and he's freaking out and they're panicking because they find it hard and they're not sure if they believe him. So he ends up proving it. Um, when Billy reads one of the, one of the, um, the story about Jennifer and him and they disappear into the, into the world of the dream and find themselves going through the motions. Which, one of my favorite moments I think is really hilarious is like, when he, Billy reads, like, fang the word fangs he's like wow that's so gruesome man and it's like really that, that you think that's bad <laughs> of course they're you know preteen or teenage early teens i don't know but i'm just like really that's you find that gruesome you find that's that is bad but anyway so he just freaks out so he ends up stopping reading and just as Sean is about, vampire Sean is about to bite her neck, they, Billy has stopped reading and they return to the real world and they're freaking out because of what's, and turns out Sean recalls that the next day, the, the day, earlier the day at school that he had given their teacher, Miss Dodds, a, um, one of the stories he wrote he wrote and it turns out that it was a story about Billy in the grave and there so they have to race back and stop her from reading stop Miss Dodds from reading the school reading the story so to transport Billy into the grave and um and of course they don't get there on time they they don't get there on time and they almost don't stop her. I mean, they don't get there on time, and they don't stop her. And Billy finds himself transported in the world of the grave, and the st the story he got sent transported. He got he is part of. Um. And he, like Jennifer and Sean, goes through the motions of and almost finds himself buried alive. And so, Sean and Jennifer are quickly have to figure out something to stop him. To, I mean, to stop Miss Dodds. And then, for, and smartly, they brought the typewriter with them, and they start typing, which, I don't know if, although when they were running, I mean, I guess he had to go back to the car and grab it, because I don't see, or he must have, uh, like, a bike or something. I don't know if he had a car or not. I don't know if they were old enough to drive. I don't know if they were, like, 16 yet. But, um, somehow they end up with the typewriter. They brought the typewriter with them. And Sean comes up with this, you know, he realizes, oh, wait a second, everything I type in this comes true. So he types up a quick ending where everything worked out and then Billy was never, you know, Billy somehow, or the story, none of the stories came true when Bill, and none of the stuff that happened to them happened. So, that, like I said, I have a soft spot for this one because, like I said, I like the idea of a typewriter. And uh, for, there was a period of time where I wanted to be a writer. Um, I still, in the back of my mind, I kind of still do. But I'm also not, you know, because I'm lazy. And I don't, you know, I don't discipline myself to write. And like I said, some people would tell me I don't want it enough because of that. Um, which, and another thing I've noticed about these episodes is that. And I think a lot of teen shows, you know, make out the teacher characters and the parents really dumb or bullies and or like really dumb, overprotective or bullies. The like the parental figures or like teachers or something like Shafter was terrible at his job. He constantly lost his temper. I don't even know why he was a prince why he's still principal. I think he should have quit long ago. And um but this one, although Miss Dawes was not that bad, but they do kind of do make fun of the fact, you know, the fact that she is a bigger woman and she likes to eat stuff, like sweets and stuff. Like, um, when she's reading the story about Billy, she goes into the cafeteria and, um, you know, has to decide between the fruit or, you know, a Danish and of course, I'd, I'm, I'm, I'd go for the Danish too. 
<laughs> somehow it feels more appetizing and satisfying even if later you're hungry like an hour later. <laughs> but, um, and sometimes the sugary stuff, the sugar flavor, you know, lingers in your mouth. And I think that's why, you know, it makes you want more. <laughs> so it's like, it lingers. So you're tempted to want more, I guess. I don't know how that all works. I don't understand, like, science or anything. But it's just, it's funny, you know. And then, so, she doesn't eat the whole pastry. You know, she goes back. She goes to the bathroom. And I think there was a, um, and I want to say that there was a treadmill in the, in the gym. Which... I did not go to, in high school or middle school, there were no treadmills in my gym. But I want to say she did go on one at one point. And I know she didn't leave the school. I don't know, like I said, it's, I need to, I should have rewatched these beforehand. But I figured I knew enough. But there's certain details I don't remember. But, I, like, I want to say she was on, a, she gets on, like, a treadmill or something. Or, like, a bike. Maybe not, I don't know, but... I, for some reason, I thought I remember her exercising while she's reading. Um, and so, like, they they find her. They're chasing her around the school. They try to track her down. They go to the cafeteria. And, like, they pick up, a, like, Sean picks up this the pastry that's partially eaten. And it's like, she was here. And I just, it's like, they kind of, I mean, I think they made it all in good fun. It was, like, a light little joke and stuff. But I don't know if they would have been able to get away with it nowadays. But it's like, yeah, I think you're kind of mocking her for her, like, well, either way, I don't care. I just, I just, it's kind of funny that, you know, that he basically picks up the pastry and is like, oh my god, she was here. Um, like, that's his clue to let her know that she was in the cafeteria. Um... So, yeah, that was the, um, one, oh, wait, well, one other thing, I think what they, like, Sean was pretty decent, he's okay, and probably, he's probably better than some of his classmates, because he wanted to be a writer, and it's probably a good, like, starting, you know, but I'm not an expert, and I haven't written anything in years, like, and I'm sure my writing is crap when I look back, I mean, I look at my, I was on my, high school school newspaper and I'm like it, looking back a lot of my short stories feel unfinished <laughs> like I you know I'm not good with the finishing stuff that's the problem and then I have because you know I did write fan fiction and then for some reason when I got my first laptop my first Mac computer um my Mac laptop I couldn't upload my my writing my you know Microsoft or pages document to the fan fiction website, and so I kind of, and they couldn't figure it out, and I just got really impatient, and I just gave up, and I haven't tried since. So I have some unfinished stories, so I'm like, so yeah, I'm, I'm probably not, I don't even know how good those were, um, but I mean, at the same time, it's fan fiction, I know it's not serious, but it was a good place to practice. Either way, though, like, he was just like, it was, he was pretty, he's okay. For, you know. But, I, again, I think them complaining about two pages. It's like, yeah, that that's nothing. That Two pages is not that bad. I mean, I know it's hard to get started, but come on. Um, I mean, make up whatever crap you want. Just, it's only two pages. But, anyway, so, that was the tale of the Dream Machine. Um... They're pretty cool. Like, I'm, you know, I like the idea of the typewriter. What have you type on the typewriter coming true? Um, which, by the way, I forgot to mention that, um, the original owner of the typewriter had disappeared and was never seen again, which I should have mentioned that earlier for a dramatic effect. But it's been a while since I've done these, these reviews, so I gotta get back, you know, I got, gotta get back into the rhythm, get better at doing these. Um, but... I like the idea of the typewriter being magical, um, and how, like, whatever you typed on it would come true, whether it was in a dream or real life. I thought that was such a cool concept. And then, of course, there's also the, um, I just, I'm a sucker for all the episodes that are ghost stories. 
I think those are really fun. I mean, there's some, like, The Tale of the Fire Ghost. I wasn't the biggest fan of that one. Um, I was one of Tucker stories. Um, oh, and Kinky was the one who told the, told that one. Told the tale of the dream machine. And what they did for her storyline is she has laryngitis. So she had to type up her narration. Which I thought that was really cool too. Um, I don't know if the actress actually had, maybe the actress did that had laryngitis and they decide, oh, well, let's just do that. It would be perfect for the atmosphere of the story. Um, unless the actress is really good at doing the, making the, her voice sound croaky. Um, which, maybe. But anyway, so, um, I thought, you know, so I like that one. The other one, like I said, was a ghost story. I thought... Like, I really like ghost stories, especially when you actually go back to the past. Ghost stories where they actually go to the past. Um, I'm not the most recent past, but the, um, like, past past. Although there, there's not that many episodes where you actually do, they actually do historical. Um, there's only, like, a handful of them. But I like it. I like them when they do that in the ghost story episodes. Um, anyway, so... Like I said, those are my reviews. I hope you like it. Sorry, it's a little rough. Like I said, it's been a while. So I'll have to do better next time. Um, when I do another one. And I hope you guys enjoy this. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Click subscribe. Um, if you like hearing about me, talk about not just starting your favorite dark, but literature as well, please. Um, but even if you're just here for the Are the Dark, that's cool too. And I will talk to y'all later.